What genetic mutation do a third of Americans possess, yet no one looks for it or tests for it? BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today we're going to talk about something unusual because you probably haven't heard about it before, yet it's something very important and it's diseases that are based on one genetic abnormality called the MTHFR mutation. I know that's a mouthful, it was for me. Anyway, so MTHFR. So this mutation is possessed by a third of Americans, yet no one seems to test for it, even though it's very important to young women who, uh, when they possess this, have a larger number of miscarriages, a high percentage of infertility, and that's a big deal right now in, in our uh, younger population. And then in our older population, cardiologists are not told, or primary care doctors are not told, to test for homocysteine, which is the test that tells us if we need to look for the MTHFR mutation. And then if it's positive, then we go to look for the mutation itself. But none of these physicians or their groups of physicians that tell them what they should do uh, to be good doctors have included this in their testing. And I find that really unusual because the, the cure for this is very simple. It's a vitamin cure, believe it or not. So let's, let's go back and, and go over uh, what made me start thinking about this, which was over 10 years ago, I went to an AMMG, Age Management Medical Group conference, and they were talking about this new test that could test for um, a genetic defect that caused a lot of disease in people. So they said, this is new, this is a test, you can order it, it's called homocysteine. So I started looking into it, reviewing it, and, uh, and actually trying to find more scientific data on it. And I was so surprised that I hadn't heard about it before because it is a test that every, all the labs were doing, but very few people were running. And it is the first test to see if somebody has this MTHFR genetic defect. So MTHFR um, basically is, um, is the gene that helps you make your B vitamins, very important vitamins, they're very important to every cell in your body, take your B vitamins and make them into active B vitamins, active B12, active uh, folate, and then go out to, out to your cells and work. So the enzyme that actually methylates your B vitamins inside your liver may not work in a third of our population. That's huge because if you don't have that enzyme working properly, you build up homocysteine, which is pretend you had a factory and all of the things going into the factory, all of the, all of the um, things that you make, say, a car out of, were going into the factory and you couldn't make the car and they just all started building up. What do you do? You throw them out in the trash. Well, with, with homocysteine, if you're, if you are not able to take your B vitamins and make them into methyl B vitamins, then the body can't use them. So your liver throws them into your arteries and makes what's called soft plaque. Well, soft plaque is a different kind of plaque than the kind we talk about normally. We call the other kind of plaque hard or calcium plaque. And that is, that is a, an inflammation and cholesterol plaque and it's completely different. It narrows the blood vessels. Well, these are soft plaques, and these soft plaques narrow the blood vessels, but also uh, they break off, flick off little pieces of this soft plaque, which are emboli, and those emboli can cause heart attacks, strokes. They can get stuck in the vessels of 
heart, lung, or your brain, and that can cause huge damage. So if there are many people who have strokes that don't know why, and if it was evaluated ahead of time, they could have avoided that stroke because it was an emboli that caused the stroke, and the emboli most likely came from a soft plaque caused by the inability to make your B vitamins that are in in many foods that we eat and in our vitamin in our vitamin supplements and make that vitamin into something that we can use. So basically it's trash and it's trash inside our arteries. So that's what it does to older people. Now what does it do to young people? Well, the fact that you can't methylate your B vitamins uh, when women are trying to get pregnant means that they are not able to make methyl folate and methyl B12, which are essential to pregnancy and essential to a developing baby. So they, do, they are not able to make um, a suitable placenta and they are more frequently um, harmed by having miscarriages over and over and over again. The other problem is they just can't get pregnant if they are making no usable B vitamins, which means methylated B vitamins. So if they, if they are if they have high homocysteine, they have the MTHFR defect, then they can't make methylated B and they can't get pregnant. So changing that would assist them in their quest for pregnancy. And in fact, we do have methylated B vitamins in, in our vitamins, in specific vitamins that are, um, I mean, I have to find them. I had to look for them. They're in Smarty Pants Vitamin, the whole line of Smarty Pants Vitamins. Um, they're in Gero Vitamins. They're in Thorn Vitamins because those companies know how important it is to give methylated, already methylated B vitamins to people so for the young people so they can get pregnant for the older people so we don't have uh, strokes and heart attacks. So this is one of those things that I find to be ridiculous that this hasn't been um, shouted from the rooftops to people so that they can get healthy. The, pr the problem is, is that we would have to change all our vitamins to methyl B so that it would be okay for a third of our population. Well, that's a huge number and we should do something like that. That's what governmental uh, agencies are for is to find things that are harming us and then change what is expected to be in a vitamin so or in our food. We can't really change our food, but we can change the supplements we take. And the way we treat this is to give people who have high homocysteine, and a healthy homocysteine is eight or below, and some people say six or below. The lab tests, when you do the lab test, it says 10 or above, which is truly not healthy. So we're looking for people with a uh, homocysteine above Eight. And if they have a homocysteine above eight, then we go test their MTHFR and see if they have one or two of the, of the mutations. Obviously, people with both mutations have a much more severe course and more likely to get uh, strokes and emboli or more likely to be infertile. So they need to be much more careful about only getting methylated B vitamins. Uh, the people with one mutation um, I have one mutation, my daughter has one mutation. We have to be careful as well. I don't think I'd even have my lovely granddaughter, Kate, if, we ha if my brilliant daughter hadn't found Smarty Pants prenatal vitamins and switched to those, and they have methyl B vitamins. And I do not have any stock or anything else in Smarty Pants. They're just, they're just a very intelligent company that thought of this early on. But why don't regular pre prenatal vitamins have methylated B? They're a prescription, most of them. Now they're over the counter in some cases in some states. They should all have methylated B vitamins to prevent pregnancy loss, to prevent damage to babies, and to take care of the mothers who are actually uh, high in homocysteine or have one of the mutations. So this is both a a problem of not knowing anything about this and going about your business taking regular vitamins and looking at your vitamins and if it says um, folic acid or cyanocobalamin and you have this problem then you're making yourself worse 
I found that most doctors don't quite get the process of how this works. They just say, take more vitamin B12, take more fol folic acid, and you'll be better. But in fact, those patients get worse. The true answer to this is for you to take methyl B12, methyl folate, instead of those other two B vitamins to actually normalize your homocysteine and not develop so soft plaque on the inside of your blood vessels so that you don't have plaque, so that you don't have emboli and you don't have strokes. So I, um, I had the most interesting conversation with my cardiologist 10 years ago. He went through my lab that I had ordered for myself, of course, because I'm a control freak. And I ordered on my lab and I added homocysteine to that. And 10 years ago, it was in the cardiology journals, the information about homocysteine and MTHFR uh, mutations. However, not every cardiologist has time to read every article. So uh, I assume that he ha must have just kind of breezed over this. But it was in his journal and he said, what's homocysteine? And I just kind of chuckled and I said, well, and I explained what I explained to you today. He said, I think I should be ordering that. <laughs> and I said, I think you should be too. And you should be putting people on methylated B vitamins, not what all the other doctors say is just take more B12, but take more uh, folic acid because that's not the answer. You have to take a specific kind. So <clears throat> sometimes we have to share information with each other besides sharing uh, information with our patients. Um, I, I believe that a lot of things just kind of go under the radar with governmental agencies, but this is a pretty important one. The symptoms, and these are very broad symptoms of having a um, MTHFR mutation are fatigue, irritability, anxiety, depression, poor memory, constipation, food sensitivities, cold and hot flashes, sore muscles, numbness, dermatitis, inability to think, um, trouble going to sleep, and infertility and miscarriages. Also, the, the diseases of having strokes and heart attacks. So I would like you to ask your, neck, your doctor at their, your next visit to include a homocysteine level in, in your panel of blood tests so you can find out whether your homocysteine is high or low. And if it's high, find out if you have the MTHFR defect. If you do, then all you have to do is take a different kind of vitamin than you're currently taking, and you'll be much better off, and you'll save yourself a lot of um, anger, gnashing of teeth, and sadness if you're young and you're trying to have babies, and the same emotions if you're older and you or your spouse has a, has a stroke or a heart attack. So please be healthy. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. And we would love to see you next week. Goodbye. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.